Welcome to your Intro to, to Statistics, Unit 4, Lesson 1. Today we're going to talk about random variables. So our objective is to describe distributions of random variables and use those descriptions to find the probability of events. So first thing we probably ought to do is define random variable. A random variable is a quantitative variable, so something that's measured, that assumes a value determined by chance or random outcome. A discrete random variable is a quantitative random variable that can take on only a finite number of values or a countable number of values. That's just another way of saying it. So like the number of books in a college library, okay, they can have, you know, 522 or 523, but nothing in between. A continuous random variable, however, is a quantitative random variable that can take on any of the countless number of values in a line interval. So between any two points on a line, there's an infinite number of points. So the amount of rainfall in your state during the month of June, it can take on any number at all between uh, on the number line. So that would be a continuous random variable. Today we're going to focus on uh, discrete random variables, but it's important to go ahead and define the continuous ones. We'll look at um, some of those later. Um, a probability distribution is another vocabulary term we need to understand. It's an assignment of probabilities to the specific values of the random variable in the case of the discrete random variables or to a range of values of the random variable in the continuous case. The sum of these probabilities must be 1. So if you have every event in the sample space defined and you have all the probabilities there, they have to add up to 1. That's a very important fact for you to know. So for example, the probability for ro the rolling of an ordinary die, so you have um, one die and you roll it, the, prob the values that x can take on are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, because those are the different outcomes. And they are equally likely, so each of these um, values of x has a probability of 1 6. Now, sometimes different values for different events will have um, different, different probabilities, but in this case, they are all equally likely. For instance, here's one where the values that the random variable can take on have different probabilities of occurring. So, believe it or not, somebody has um, actually created a boredom tolerance test. Okay, there's some tasks that people have to be able to tolerate boredom very well. Um, other tasks, you want people that crave novelty and you wouldn't want them to have um, a high boredom tolerance score. So, on this test, they were given to 20,000 subjects, um, 1,400 of them got a score of zero, they had no tolerance for boredom, um, 2,600 got a score of one, 3,600 got a score of two. This is actually um, a distribution of the number of subjects who got the different scores, okay, so this is the actual counts. If we want the probability distribution, then what we would do um, is do the relative frequency. We would do 1400 divided by 20,000 to get 0.07, 2600 divided by 20,000 to get 0.13, and so on. Okay, so you can see that the most likely score for a person who has not yet taken the test to get is, is a 3. There's a 0.3 probability that the person's going to get a 3 before they actually go ahead and do it. But um, all the different values for x have different probabilities. So the probability that a randomly selected person would get a 0 is 0 0.07. The probability that a randomly selected person would get a 1 is 0.13. Well, when you add all these up, you get a total probability of 1 because a person has to get a score between 0 and 6. Again, this is a discrete random variable because a person can get a 0 or a 1 or a 2 or a 3 or a 4 or a 5 or a 6, but nothing in between those values. There is a countable number of possible outcomes. There's actually 7. Okay, so it is a discrete random variable and the sum of the probabilities in the uh, probability distribution is 1. We can represent these in a probability histogram where you have the scores in this case listed across the bottom, the values that x can take on will be um, listed across the horizontal axis. On the vertical axis, you would have the probability of um, x taking on each of those values. We can find the mean and standard deviation of a discrete probability distribution. Um, another way of referring to the mean is the expectation or expected value. It's the long run average. And so um, 
mu is going to equal the sum of each x times the probability of that x occurring. You will get a formula sheet for uh, the quizzes and tests in this chapter, uh, so you need to be able to use the formula, but you don't have to have it memorized. The standard deviation is the square root of the sum of x minus mu squared times the probability of x. Okay, so for a probability distribution that has values of x of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and the probability of each x value 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, if we want to find the mean, what we want to do is we want to create an x times p of x column. And so you just multiply it. 0 times 0 0.3 is 0, 1 times 0 0.3 is 0 0.3, 2 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.4, 3 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.3, 4 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.4, and then you just sum up the values in that column, so 1.4. So you can see we've done what the formula tells us to do. We've done the sum, we added up the column. What did we add up? x times p of x. So again, you're going to be given the formula, but you've got to know how to turn it into this column. So you're going to have to practice this. The mean then is 1.4. So that's the expected value of this little distribution here. So let's find the standard deviation. Okay, so Here's our distribution again, okay, x minus mu, so we're taking the mu value of 1.4, we're going to do 0 minus 1.4 is negative 1.4, 1 minus 1.4 is negative 0 0.4, 2 minus 1.4 is 0 0.6, 3 minus 1.4 is 1.6, and 4 minus 1.4 is 2.6, all right, so we want to, um, have x minus mu squared. So we're going to take each one of these values and square them. Make sure that you put the negative 1.4 in parentheses. Once we've squared everything, we should have all positive values. So make sure you do negative 1.4 times negative 1.4 to get 1.96, negative 0 0.4 times negative 0 0.4 to get positive 0.16, and then we get 0 0.36, 2 0.56, and 6.76. Now, because they all occur at different frequencies, they have different probabilities, we don't want to add them up yet. We need to multiply by their probabilities. So we do 1.96 times 0.3, and that gives us 0.588. Go ahead and get out your calculator and double check my arithmetic. We, for, for x minus mu squared times p of x for x equals 1, we do the 0 0.16 times 0.3, and that gives us 0 0.048. For x equals 2, we do 0 0.36 times 0 0.2, and that gives us 0 0.072. For x equals 3, we do 2.56 times 0 0.1, which is 0.256. And for x equals 4, we do 6.76 times 0 0.1 to get 0 0.676, and then we add those up, and that's 1.64. So that is the variance because we've added just all that up. We haven't really talked about variance here, but that's what that is. That's the variance. Our formula tells us, if you look, we want the square root of the sum of x minus mu squared times p of x. So we want the square root of the total of this column. We want square root of 1.64, okay, because that's going to give us a standard deviation, and that is 1.28. Okay, guys, that's it for notes. Go ahead and do the problems to try on your own. Have those ready to go when you get to class so you get full credits for your notes. So thank you so much for paying good attention and taking good notes. I'll see you in class. I hope you have a terrific day.